is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to this private video call that I do with my friends where we play Delta Green that's called Get in the Trunk. What's going on? Welcome back. I see these lovely faces spread out before me on my computer screen. I've moved myself away. I don't like it. Do you guys look at yourself on the screen when you play remote games? Do you put your video up? equal with everyone else's how do you get rid of i would love to not see myself how do yeah. i get rid of it <laughs> i yeah, only you just look go at up to view and then unclick show self in call you didn't know this what you've oh, been looking wow. at yourself for years oh i have it gosh. set to where i only see myself i figured i figured because <laughs> your performances are so visceral i was like he must just be looking at roger in the mirror it looks great i do need, <laughs> i do need to see myself every so often because sometimes i feel like i get so into the storytelling or like I'm listening to someone and it's like your face when you watch TV or play video games. I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) so I need to check in every so often because I'm like, Sydney, (laughs) you're on screen. (laughs) Everyone can see you. Yeah, I always make fun of people. uh, uh, Recently, I can't remember when it was, but Matthew threw something around about uh, no screens for his kid and Troy was like, okay, good luck (laughs) with that once you've got three. And I say the same thing. I'm like, get the hell out of here with your nonsense. Just put them in front of the screen. They're going to be there anyway in a couple of years. Uh, But every single time that I put a TV on and my kids watch it and I see their faces watching it, it makes me sick to my stomach because I'm like, they look like they're dying. Like, they're just like, <laughs> like the, there's no functionality, like nothing is happening in their body. And I'm just like, I don't know if they're learning anything or I, I don't know if this is good. It doesn't look good. But you know what? They're quiet. Yeah, I feel bad about that, too. But then I think about how when I was a kid on Saturday morning, I would sprint downstairs and sit in front of the TV from 630 in the morning until 230 p.m. <laughs> (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a different, it was a different time. Obviously the way parenting is a little different and stuff like that, but like TV, I think is, is a particular thing that I, I try to not be too judgy on just because I, I mean, I watched so much television. I, when I was, I remember being in like summers during elementary school, I remember just watching soap operas. Like my mom would just have soap operas on while she was like doing stuff around the house. And she was just like, just watch TV. (laughs) It was either that or like get out of the house. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, because there's only one TV. And so I remember watching like all my children at like (laughs) 10 years old and being like invested in the characters. (laughs) Yeah. It's, It's different now though. I feel like, I don't know, when my mom was a child, she remembered getting a color television. Like they had <laughs> yeah. black and white. She grew up with a black and white TV and then she was old enough to remember they got a color television. My dad was a little different. He was more technologically advanced. Like he grew up with some video games. So like we were a video game house when I was a kid. I feel like being parents now, what a fucking nightmare. Like you <laughs> grew up with the internet and your kids are like born into it. I don't know what I would do if I had a kid. I would immediately be like, yeah, I don't know, play Call of Duty, I guess. Like, how old are you? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's about right. What what is the video, what's the video game age for you guys? Oh, Uh, I'd I'd let Archer watch like, uh, when he was three years old and we just got him a switch for his fifth birthday but it's control we don't just say fuck off with the switch all day right, it's right. like once school starts uh, or i guess by the time this air school have started you can only play it on the weekends and even then it's like very limited time um but for the last you know month from between turning five and starting school we we're just like all right at night time you can play for about a half an hour and then we shut up so and he's, into, he's into it <laughs> yeah oh yeah way into it yeah it's so good for their motor skills their fine yeah. motor skills i think you know it's all about choosing the right games and same with tv like there are some shows that are really popular that are like bad for kids that like switch switch stuff a lot or show a lot of things like there's the show coco melon right this was really really mm-hmm. famous like so many kids watch coco melon well they've done studies it's like horrible 
horrible for children because of the way that it like constantly um, switches the thing. You should they they has a whole list of shows that like they have long shots. Even Daniel Tiger, it's on the list of shows that like the, while the messages is good for Daniel Tiger, um, the show the animation isn't good for the child's brain. So there's other shows that are geared towards better brain development than others. So you, you can get way you can go down the deep end like reading about this stuff, but at the end of the day, it just comes down to like really monitoring monitor the games monitor what they watch monitor the time well and that's my problem with the video games it's like i'd love to to pass that on but like i don't have time to play video games myself (laughs) and i would have to take some of that time but actually i don't even have that time because that would be at night anyway basically right so i have to find time during the day to like train them because (laughs) it's it's hard to just give them a controller and be like play mario odyssey you know it's like (laughs) a five-year-old or a four-year-old it's like it's kind of tough to like start from scratch but i don't want to put in the time because if i'm going to spend time with them i'm like let's go outside you know what i mean like we ride bikes and we play ball and we you know do that kind of stuff like I don't want to sit inside and play a video game with you right now, uh, but maybe dead a winner it'll it'll change a little bit. But I do want to train them. I just don't want to like hand them a controller and walk away. But I do want them to to start playing a little Joe, bit more. One of the first games I played with my dad was Civilization. I think you could play Crusader Kings with Gwen. I think you could give her a rundown. <laughs> I mean, this is my mistress. Uh, <laughs> so should I start a seduce scheme? <laughs> Here's uh, the scullery maid I consensually impregnated. <laughs> well, it's fine because she's unmarried. Uh, no, I, I just would. Uh, uh, you know what I started with them was that got a lot of traction and is still pretty good is Stardew Valley. That one's been really oh, good. Yeah. Uh, but it is, it's more of an adult game than you think. Like, I'm trying to tell uh, my son, Joe, who's five, you know, I'm trying to be like, well, I mean, you got to plant crops and then you have to like eat your crops. Or you're going to have no energy. And uh, he just, just like, oh, uh, okay. Like, doesn't know how to plant crops. And then it's like, no, 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 it's it's spring. You can't plant summer crops in spring. Yeah. So it's tricky. You got to kind of like, you? what's wrong with you? <laughs> and now I'm you thinking about get- Crusader Kings. I'm like, oh my God, I'm upping his stress level <laughs> you should try Cur- kirby and the forgotten land like i yeah, can literally so just I hear like this is great i hear hand kirby's it off, great and it's fucking phenomenal and there'll be parts where he's like dad i can't get him I'm like well then you better try harder uh <laughs> and then maybe sometimes i'll like show him through it but like it's really great the characters you don't see, they don't feel like they die you know they just kind of reappear a couple seconds later yeah uh, when you run out of hit points but uh, it's not I super heard good violent things ab- about kirby i want to yeah. check that out i um i also uh, another one I think would be pretty good is I've got Gwen on a, um, on like a kindness jar thing. So like she gets a Ooh. crystal in the jar, like when she does something kind and, uh, it's taking extremely long to fill up, <laughs> but it's getting, <laughs> it's getting near the top. And when it gets to the top, I told her, and by the way, she's had it for like more than a year. When it gets to the top, I told her she can have, uh, uh, Mario Kart. So I think that oh, that nice. could be a fun one to just. Obviously, you're not going to win races, but you can just mess around on that. Dude, for a you while. can win races yeah. because they have a setting. Because we got it for Archer, um, where they can't go out of bounds and they can't go back. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, oh, so nice. If you turn that setting on, like Archer's won a ton of races now. If he just stays on track, because otherwise, I'm like, well, you turn around, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> Stop going I did the, the same thing. You're driving into the infield. What's the matter with you? What are you doing? <laughs> Hold down so the accelerator. Funny. That's like my main memory of my dad tried to teach me to play video games because we had an Odyssey 2000 back wow. in the day from Magnavox. Oh. Oh. And I remember like sitting in the basement playing with him and him like doing that. He's just like, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? I was just like, like, like crying, like running out of the room. I'm like, like coming to wait till dad goes to sleep. Oh, of course. That was that was me playing Call of Duty with my dad. I'm terrible at first person shooters and he was trying to bond. Like he was like, we could play he loved oh, Call of yeah. Duty. He was like, we could play together. Like we could be on a team and we can we could play together. Like five minutes in, he was like, I don't think we should play together. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you Bring watch, the team to kill watch me down. play and we'll play something else when I'm done playing and then we'll switch off. <laughs> look, look at your DPS. He's like, you where are you looking? That? Why are you shooting wildly? Why are you shooting wildly? That's what I would do. I would just spin. <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of shooting wildly, uh, there may be some shooting in today's episode. I don't know. It's been a long, long run uh, with no 
with no violent uh, shooting action here on uh, on Get in the Trunk. But <laughs> I don't know. You guys are starting to get into some dangerous territory, and I'm very, very much looking forward to playing this session today. Uh, it kind of does feel like... I keep saying this, but it feels like you guys keep hitting and you, you're not aware of it because you're not reading the whole thing, but you just keep hitting these little milestones that are amazing. And they're just opening up parts that can take you, you know, in all these different directions and are really, really scary. And so um, you guys are really approaching some uh, awesome, awesome stuff as we close in towards the end. We're getting towards the end of uh, this season. So, uh, let's do a brief recap. Uh, I know I always say that and then it always goes super long and I give, I give Troy the business about it, uh, on the live shows, but man, it's just so hard for Delta green because there's so many details that I want to hope, you know, I hope you guys remember in terms of mystery solving, but whatever, I'll just tell you the answer at the end, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> so last episode, I don't even know if it's last episode, but previously on get in the trunk you um you had decided after speaking with king bile and mr wild that you would attempt to escape the hospital using king bile or timothy bile as a guide of sorts but then you sort of said hey maybe we could just do it without him because we don't trust that guy that guy's a weirdo and roger and vicky grabbed sunshine a 90 plus year old patient who Roger believes is Lyra Westover, as impossible as this seems to grasp. He recognizes her facial structure in this 90 plus year old woman uh, who is basically vegetative, uh, very unresponsive, but did manage at one point after being coaxed by Vicky to draw a watch and a door. You uh, go into what was Dallin's office, except the hospital looks strange and different now. Remember, it's like uh, shaping in different ways. It's larger and uh, there seems to be more and more people around, which is not what, you know, you were, uh, of course, it's not what you were expecting. That's a dumb thing to say. What am I trying to say? It's, um, it's, uh, it's just wholly unexpected that there would can be more and more patients and orderlies like uh, arriving in the hospital, but not really arriving as if they were always there. And maybe you were just seeing the hospital in a different way. So it's, it's all very mentally confusing and um, lot, lots of sanity rolls. Every episode now we're getting them, uh, you know, in and out, in and out. Uh, you guys are doing a lot of them and, and succeeding at a lot of them. Um, let's do a very brief uh sanity check-in uh let's go with numbers so i'm gonna guess from highest to lowest i'm gonna go uh highest is probably vicky what's your number current my cur oh my current is 58 because i did lose some in the last I think, two, two episodes so then maybe i'm wrong roger yeah nice 58 not bad not bad at all <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, what's he got how about a 63 for Nails Cumstone? Oh, oh, you oh. Nails! He gains oh, nails. Some back. I you remember he gained 10 Yeah, you got time. like 10 back. Yep, he got a massive amount back after a very, very strange and disturbing procedure where something was drawn out of his head. Was it his own insanity that was being drawn out of his head? Next, There's a good I chance believe. I'm dead. Yeah, there's a good chance he's already dead. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a good chance he went down in the plane crash before season four. So, oh God. there's really he could have been dead this whole time. Uh, Bobby, I believe you're next. What do you got? Uh, uh Bobby's coming in real low, thirty six. Thirty six, big drop off, twenty plus point drop off, and then so we've got. Old Dr. Neil, who is sitting, uh, who's now speaking to everyone in a different ancient uh, language <laughs> called Tartesian. Uh, ancient, made up. We don't know the difference. <laughs> uh, Skid, what is your, what is uh, Neil's sanity right now? Uh, I'm a 25. Oh. 25. <laughs> right Wait, what is your next breaking point? Uh, 15. Wow. So also that means for, the final breaking point. <laughs> for yeah. any sanity check that Dr. Neil Bachman rolls, he has a 75% chance of failure. I yeah. mean, this is getting really, really, really bad. Um, I love, but I think you're doing a great job embracing it, playing the uh, madness of the character. Um, madness isn't the right word as much as the detachment from the from reality that Vicky and Roger see and the acceptance of the reality 
that is being presented to you by the king in yellow, as it seems, right? So yeah, he's, exactly, he's embracing yeah. this in a way, and that's what that number represents. Um, madness is merely a relative term. This is a term that would be could be said about him from, you know, Joe Schmo, psychiatrist, you know, working in Chicago, Illinois, in the real world. But Neil knows better. That's right. where we're at with Neil. So with these, uh, w- with your sanity in this state, you guys are all attempting to escape the hospital. You go to break into Dallin's office and find that it's actually quite easy to get into and nobody happens to be around at the moment. You bring Sunshine there and Sunshine is a very sort of, she has a reaction at all to being reeled in the office, which is saying something. Normally she's almost inert and she starts to, you know, get really agitated, starts to slump, her heart rate starts to rapidly increase. And so you think maybe it has something to do with this doorway or this room, and so you bring her back. She seems to calm down. Roger finds the a watch, the watch perhaps, that Sunshine was drawing in um, Dr. Dallin's drawer. And the watch, instead of having numbers around the outside, has letters for each number, and it spells along the shore around the outside with the E weirdly being on the back of the watch and then all the letters from there continue uh, saying uh, that I don't remember off the top of my head Um, along the shore the waves break or something yeah I have it somewhere in my notes somewhere in your notes and so you know what is this this is rather strange Roger and Vicky both think about going through the large aluminum red door aluminum whatever it is large metal door <laughs> in <laughs> Dallin's office I'd like to know the material of the door yeah, I'd like to know the yeah. proceed. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have a fireball spell you want to see what's going to be uh, the the door was not there when you originally visited Dr. Dallin on your first arrival at the Dorchester house but now here it is you think should we go in you've got reason enough to suspect from the evidence that you gathered that uh um lyra westover went through this door that michael witwer went through this door and neither were ever seen again or maybe this is lyra westover Uh, very strange so should we go in without tim bile and just take our chances everybody seemed to hesitate a little bit And after finding this apparent poem or something on the back of, or on this watch, Vicky wanted to start looking for books. And as she pulled a book off the shelf, she saw another book behind it and then pulled another book, another book behind that, pulled another book, another book behind that. And it keeps going and going and going. At the end of last episode, I said something like 10 or 15 feet. And that is grossly underestimating uh, the length of time that you are in there and that you are digging uh, if you continue to keep going, which you're going to have to now because you're already committed, it is more like 30 to 40 feet. So oh, it's like a tunnel. It's like a tunnel. You have to be whole body in there pulling books and yeah. tossing them back out to Roger, essentially. But as you get to the last row, all of a sudden, oh, you go to grab it and the books fall forward and tumble down. And the last image that we saw was Vicky opening her eyes to or leaning in to see a grand library of some kind thousands upon thousands upon thousands of books on mahogany shelves in every direction all sort of around this central spot for lack of a better term that seems to draw your eyes which is a large spiral staircase that winds around the outside of this central spire and along this staircase going up multiple levels that you can already see from your angle, you see a light is shining down, motes blinking within them and uh, thousands of books on shelves around this staircase as well. That's where we left off last episode. The imagery of it could be largely inspired by for those that are uh, Dark Souls fans it could be uh, the the Duke's archives is one example another is um, where do you go uh, when you after you fight Seath the scalus when you're trapped in that like jail cell I mean it's also the Duke's archives it's just a different spot in it isn't it yeah it's the other side of the Duke's archives so there's like that long winding staircase with the uh, 
uh, mind flares down the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's inspired by that as well. So for those that have pictured those levels, that's what it looks like. A big round staircase that is sw- swirling up around a, a large central spire that could be described as, you know, 30 to 60 feet in in diameter. So it's a large staircase that is sweeping mm-hmm. around. Going up into the light. Let's start today uh, with Vicky. Let's start right where we left off. Vicky, you push through this line of books and then you see this open before you. Tell me, what are your thoughts? What do you do next? I mean, uh, it's so like cinematic. I can see it so mm-hmm. clearly. Mm-hmm. Like she pushes through <laughs> and like, you know, like lurches, like arm just goes through the wall books fall you hear like the echoes in this cavernous space is like uh, do do they hit the floor like do they yeah they hit a floor floor. yep and you hear vicky just like and then like her breath you know on the wind (laughs) and she just like grabs the remaining books on the sides and uh, i want can i do i know you just described the space but can i do like an alertness just to see if I see any one, like any any moving bodies or anything in here. Sure. And I and I do it. Hold on. You do the check, or you succeed at the check. <laughs> Don't mess with me, Emmanuel. <laughs> uh, oh wait, I rolled the wrong one. <laughs> it's literally only one die you can roll for this game. I rolled I rolled two. I got confused. I rolled um a four. Oh. Oh. Well, in that case, I'll have to pay attention to the book. <laughs> <laughs> you start looking and first thing that triggers your alertness is the light. This light is coming in and you've seen no light since you have awoken in this space. Oh, right, because it's been night. It is, seems to be eternally night. Time does not seem to pass here. So the light immediately is, is this the way out? Is this a way out? This might occur to you. Um, you hear the sounds of, you hear sounds of shuffling and movement echoing at the barest distance of your alertness as if there may be other people in here but you can't identify it it's not right in front of you it's nowhere nearby it just you hear maybe like the the sound of a footstep or the slipping of a of a book from a shelf or something and it's just very at the end of your hearing okay yeah so she takes that in and <clears throat> slowly very carefully because now she is worried about the like infrastructure of this book hole she just starts to crawl backward and doesn't even realize how far she went like she was just like going and going and going she's like still crawling backward and she's just like feeling insanely claustrophobic now um but makes it back out and you're like kneeling on books like on the spines of books you know as you're coming back in pages ripping maybe um so she gets back out the other way Roger there's books above you how they are they fall? not falling on they you? don't fall roll a sanity check oh <laughs> <laughs> uh oh ooh 56 under 58 suck it Joe ooh. <laughs> all right wow she's right. fine I've seen this before I know books. <laughs> I was in a magic book tunnel before. Yeah. I've been in a library tunnel. <laughs> I'm a postal inspector. <laughs> a yeah. postal inspector. Hey. I've been in a magical book tunnel before. It's not I've my seen, first radio. I've seen some shit in the mail rooms. This doesn't even try. This isn't even on my radar. All right, Roger. What? Roger, there is that there, but there in I. It's all the way. <laughs> What are you talking about? And Roger is trying to like rip a piece of Lyra's wheelchair off to have a weapon. Roger, what are you doing? What? <laughs> but I'm just, I'm trying She's to just, hold on. Just I'm not just reacting to, to this at all. He's got his foot on. He's like trying to pull out a spoke or something. Uh, hold on. 
Uh, can I roll a strength check to see if I can like rip off a chunk of wheelchair? Why don't you move her out of the? Why are you trying to rip it off while she's in the chair? She's fine. <laughs> she's fine. You're gonna Break hurt her, her. Arm and use the bone as a weapon. Oh my god! Yeah, like like, a nice funny. sharp <laughs> bone. Yeah, I rolled a, f- a fifteen under seventy-five. There you go. Okay, yeah, I'll say you cleanly break off a a spoke of some kind. Uh, Maybe not a spoke, but a a part of the frame that is uh, non-essential. That uh, (laughs) is about, say it's about 16 inches in length, about a half an inch around. So it's a little metal pole, basically, a little stick. What do you want? But the edge of it is like bent and like broken, so it has a little bit of a sharpness to it. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to protect ourselves, just in case. What, no, what, did, what happened to that wall? It's actually a good idea. Why didn't I think to break it off the wheelchair? Um, the, the, the books are not, it's not a wall. It, it goes. It just keeps going. It goes I mean, and it goes and goes. Going. I dug out all of the books, and I, I, I think it's, I think it's the library that you saw, the one that you that you told me about. I, I saw a bookstore. It wasn't a, a library, or at least it sounded like a bookstore. Oh, I thought it would. Well, this is. I mean, this could this could be a bookstore. It's but it's it's massive, Roger. There's a a staircase. There's a staircase. I see the sun. The sun is shining, and but it's it's up. I mean, we would have to find a way to get in. But I don't know if we should even go in there. How many suns did you see? I couldn't see the sun. I, there was just sunlight. It, it was light. I mean, maybe it's maybe it's our world. Maybe maybe it's not. All right, all right, all right, all right. Just stay here. Well, you're I'm not right. gonna go. I'm not gonna let you go alone. I'm just gonna go take a peek inside of the book wall. Okay. And, well, give uh, me the give me the stick. What are you gonna do with this? Well, somebody comes in. What are you gonna hit him? What were you gonna do? Hit him. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm me. <laughs> okay, Roger. You're you. You're right. Right, here. Just be careful. You be careful. It's a really far drop. Just ser- seriously, be careful. I'll be fine. And he walks over to the book wall. Let me lay this out. There is a, a waiting area outside of Dr. Dallin's office. There's a door into that waiting area from out in the greater hospital. Right. That door is closed. Yeah. Vicky and Sunshine are in that waiting area. Vicky is armed with a 16-inch steel pole. Pole, stick, whatever you want to call it. Roger is now walking through another doorway into Dallin's interior office. Behind his desk is a pile of books that are now tossed all over the floor. And Roger, if you bend down, you can look through and you see a tunnel of books going for some quite some distance. And then you see light at the end, like as if it opens into a larger room. Just want to look at the books real quickly. Are they all different titles? Yep. What are some of the titles? Uh, A World Without Doors is one of the titles. And it's a book that you recognize, a book that you've seen before. several titles that yeah, you don't recognize, right. but they all seem to be somehow uh, connected to Michelle Van Fitz's room and the King in Yellow. I mean, this is all like, these books were not here when you were in Down's office before. The books on his wall were like, modern psychiatry, you know. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna start going through the tunnel. And Roger, without a weapon. <laughs> I got these. Begins. I'm sorry. A <laughs> Roger is never unarmed. Uh, <laughs> Joe Lewis and George Foreman. <laughs> All right. Roger, Joe Lewis, and, Joe, and George Foreman <laughs> begin crawling through the magic book tunnel. Just before you get to the edge, where it opens up into the library, Roger, we cut to the waiting area outside. And you see slowly the doorknob begins to turn. Click. And Vicky, this door slowly begins to open toward you. I'm going to say, 
Vicky positioned herself so that Lyra <laughs> is in the in the wheelchair. So when the door opens, you see Lyra. Vicky is behind where the door would open. So she has a vantage point of someone walking into the room. She could hit them from behind. They wouldn't see, uh, hopefully they wouldn't see her immediately is her plan. And I set up a bear trap. I don't. Mm -hmm. That would open immediately. Yeah. Do you want to do anything more convenient for yourself? (laughs) Set up a series of bear traps outside the door. Electrified bear traps. No, this makes more sense. This makes more sense. Vicky is not Roger. Vicky is not eyeing the exits in the room when she enters. She, you know, she's a trained agent, but she's not a fucking muscle uh, jughead. So the she door is, opens. She moves the ch- ch- chair under the door. She did the thing where you put the chair under the handle, so you can't stop the door with the chair. The door is opening. All right. When that happens, it's too late. <laughs> oh, oh, you're saying you retroactively yes! stopped the door? Yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. The door opens. <laughs> Vicky is standing with her little pole and the door opens. I hit him in the head. Who? You didn't even know it's I a him. <laughs> I hit them in the head. Okay, roll to hit as this head starts to peek it's past. Probably Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> roll an unarmed attack. Okay, let me just make sure that that's with a um, plus twenty percent since you have the jump on the this ambush. Oh, I, I do a good unarmed attack too. I mean, she's kill. a I get, she's a trained agent. Melee. Like, this is not an unarmed attack. That you are armed. This is melee. Even melee. better, because I rolled. <laughs> what is my melee? All right, not that great, but I rolled an eight under thirty <laughs> plus an extra twenty. That's a fifty. An eight under fifty, and. Wham! You nail Bobby in the head <laughs> as he comes around the door. Exactly as predicted by Roger. Exactly as predicted by literally everyone watching or listening to this show. <laughs> it's a good moment. Uh, you, your, your damage for your uh, steel pole is going to be 1d4 damage. Oh my god. So let's see if it's a real bad one or not. <laughs> Thanks. Thank I'm you, Maybelline. So sorry. He's oh, going to cut his head open. He's <laughs> already having a bad day. What is that? Oh, got two. All right. Two. All right. All right. It's not oh, that bad. Vicky rolls it. What are you doing? Oh, oh. I thought I was wrong. I thought I was wrong. <laughs> he took initiative. I thought he was going to do it. All right. It's all roll. Right. Thank God. It's all, all roll. It will take the worst result. <laughs> <laughs> a three. Great. Oh. All right, so, so three yeah. means not only did you get a minor concussion from this, but it also ripped open your scalp, and there you don't need stitches, but it is an open wound that is bleeding oh. on your head. So awesome. what happens? Whack, Bobby, you get smashed in the head as soon as the door opens. Oh, oh. Maybe. I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh, oh my, make sure, come, 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 ah. She pulls him in and closes the door. He comes in, followed by Neil, followed I close the door on Neil. King <laughs> Biel, uh, who comes into the room with him and is just like, "What are you doing?" I'm sorry. I am. So, I'm so sorry. I, I I I I freaked myself out because I went through the hole in the wall to the to the bookstore, the library, and I thought that somebody was going to come, and, I, and then Roger both broke this off the wheelchair. You I'm guys, so you sorry. guys should not be in here. What are you? Are you oh my god! Neil, help his head. I've got a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw it. says up. Bobby. I'm going to throw it. Hey. Am I there too? Uh, yes. yes. You're there okay. with Bobby and uh, Tim Bile, who comes in the room and it's just like, what are you doing? You shouldn't be in here. And he's looking out like the window of the door, like out to see. There's like blinds on it or whatever. And he just like moves them apart. And he's like looking out into the thing and be like, Dr. Friendly could be back in here any minute. What are you doing? We came to see the door because... Why because, didn't you come and see me? Because we were trying. I don't know who to trust. I don't trust you. Trust me or not, you need me to guide you through that door. Why can't I just walk through that door myself? You can. We'll never see you again. Why? Because what's going to happen to me? That happened to that happened to Whitworth? It's going to happen to me? I don't know what happened to Whitworth, but let me tell you something. It could be any one of a million things. You have to understand where you are. What you does have- it go to? What does it go to? The library? That door? No, the library is way farther down. That door just just opens into the lower hospital. What? I just just dug a hole to the library. 
What? And he looks over, and now we'll cut to Roger. (laughs) When we come back, we'll see if Bobby bled out. (laughs) (laughs) But I said for Neil to help him. I said for Neil to help (laughs) him. Roger, you crawl through, and for the sake of saving time, we'll say you crawl through. You see the same thing I described to Vicky, and with your alertness, you pick up the same vibe that there seems to be other people, quote unquote, you do not know, other people, other presences uh, in this giant grand library somewhere. You're not completely alone. Uh, However, you don't see anyone at the moment and you see everything else I described. And is it like, if I kept going, I would just fall into this space? Yep, just like a... um, just, just like, like a, a four, three foot drop, three or four foot drop, as oh, if in the middle high. of a bookshelf, and the floor is right there. Oh, I thought it was much higher. Okay. And I see out the window. Does it look like there's multiple suns or one sun? You don't see out a window. You just see light Sunlight. pouring in from above, but you can't see what's above. It's like there's a ceiling above you where you are. It just opens out a little bit, and you can see in the distance light is pouring down <sighs> from somewhere. You feel if you got to the base of that stair and looked up, you could see where it's coming from. I bet I could. Um, Can I, like, reach my hand up to a shelf and pull a book from this room into my hand? Uh, Yeah, sure. And you pull a book down. As it comes down... um, the title of the book <laughs> it's so funny you pull it off this thing and you pull it down and it is a like a silvery cover with red writing and says <laughs> mental illness in the workplace and beyond <laughs> is the title of the book written by devin Greenbrier. I'm going to open up the publication date where it was published. Like, I'm, just, I'm, I'm looking for sort of inconsistencies, like towns that don't exist in the real world or dates that seem weird. Yeah. Uh, you open up the book and it... Uh, Mm, trying to think if I should. <laughs> if you should uh, what? Give us information. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The way that this works is a little strange. But anyway, you you open up the book and um, you see that the publisher is uh, it's called Grolier International. G R O L I E R International. It was published in 1986. Um, And yeah, I mean, that's what you see in the publication materials. Um, And let me see. Yeah, I think that that's all you see in the publication materials. Okay. Like in, in that first page, uh, so yeah. So far, it looks like uh, just kind of flipping through, and I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll use my uh, alertness to see if I pick up on anything. I mean, I don't know if alertness is is correct, but I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm skimming through it, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah, um, that's fine. Uh, so, uh, with your alertness, I can tell you there is something that jumps out at you, which is a- as you're flipping through it you can pretty easily see rather quickly that it is a book about mental health in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And frequently throughout the book, you you see a name that repeats over and over again, and it's Seer Inc., S-E-E-R-E, comma, Inc. And it's sort of this fictional... Like I'm sorry, I shouldn't say fictional, but it is... uh, It seems to be a fictional, like pretend company that every example happens at right so it's like when it's referring to an example it's like so for example the cfo of seer inc is approached by blah 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 right like it has that sort of vibe to it and you see seer mentioned a bunch and at that triggers your uh, alertness because you are after all roger cumstone and you remember this name seer inc s-e-e-r-e 
comma ink and you remember it because we see this flash of roger's memory and it was engraved in the plastic on the bottom on the on the side near the bottom of the satellite phone that you were given by your supposed handler for this mission agent exeter he handed you this old school satellite phone and was like reuse this to call me if you need anything you dialed on that thing you set a ridiculous code for him to meet you at the apple store that never would have worked and then i i can't remember who tried it next maybe it was neil or vicky but a voice on the other end of the line said exeter is compromised and that's sort of the first time that you heard this that phone was made by sear inc and this is the second time that you've seen it uh and as you see that you know the name of the company and you start to see some of these samples you see a name that just jumps out at you abigail you see abigail w says abigail w uh obviously with a little period after it a regional manager for seer inc fails to show up to work for two weeks when she finally arrives, she claims to have traveled to a foreign country to marry a king, but her demeanor is disheveled, and many say she is not herself. Should you report this to mental health services? Yes or no. And you see that this is in a section with multiple names that you begin to recognize. I'm going to throw this on uh, your evidence board at this point, uh, and you can see... Fuck? What Roger is seeing as he's flipping through this book. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to drop it on the board right here. Let's see. Hopefully you can see it. You'll need to open oh, wow. it. Wow. Yeah, so there's the book, Mental Illness in the Workplace and Beyond. Oh, my goodness. And then you'll need to go into the actual, um, like, into the image itself. It should uh, open up the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go to the journal, mm-hmm. and that will uh allow you I just got to change your permissions but that will allow you to uh oh yeah. sweet oh check it out whoa oh, oh sweet oh so, my gosh yeah so uh why don't you start reading these from the top uh Roger um <clears throat> yeah, it's not uh, it was it was there and then it disappeared yes yeah, it's loading uh, it go into your to journal the... and it'll be in there now. There it uh, is, yeah. yeah. Ophelia S. is a secretary for Seer Inc. who has become preoccupied with her home renovation. All discussions are about the renovation and no discussion at work can pass without her referencing the subject. Her manager reports this behavior. Do you? And then there's multiple choice answers. Maximo F. is a regional <laughs> manager for Seer Inc., who has had a psychotic break due to the death of a loved one. He reports to Human Resources that invisible spiders are infesting his workstation. Uh, Do you blah, blah, blah. And then Abigail Wright. And then something about Mark R. And then... There was Mark Rourke. Do you remember Mark Rourke? Rourke. Right. But then, unfortunately, there's one that jumps out of Roger. Oh, shit! What? It says, V. Ricci is a hard worker in public relations for Seer Inc. One day she begins to request frequent time off and then requests to work from home on a regular basis. When asked for her reasons, she says that she is needed at home to take care of her son who is ill. You know that she does not have any children because she has spoken openly up until recently about trying to have children and not yet having any luck. Do you? (laughs) Multiple choice answers. So Roger sees this. And we cut back to see if Bobby's alive. Bobby will stabilize. <laughs> will stabilize. Vomiting. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't feel good. All right. So I'm Roger, you, you see this, now. and you're still at the edge of the tunnel. Vicky, you know nothing about this yet, and uh, I, I'm gonna just try to get a little, little more horror juices flowing here in our background. But um, yeah. So uh, all right. So v, uh, um, sorry, Bobby. You're, you know, the bleeding stops like after a couple minutes of you just like holding it, but it's just tender and sore and you can feel the bump forming on your head, but yeah. you're fine. But you still do take three points of damage, which is no yeah. joke. Damn it. That is, that is serious. That will, that will add up. Yeah. Uh, he closes the door behind him and Tim is like, Dr. Friend could come in here at any minute. And what is Sunshine doing in here? She, 
she's the only one who knew about Whitworth, and she was she she was telling me. She was trying to tell me. She was trying to tell me how to find him. She Roger knows, and Bobby, Bobby. She's coming with us. We have to take her with us. We were here to get her, and I'm not going to leave her behind. She's sick. You, you can't take her. You can't take her with you. Why? She won't be able to go with you. She won't be able. Why? Why? Because she doesn't understand. She's not, she's, uh, she's unresponsive. You, 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 there's, I, 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 can, I can't explain it, but there are things you have to do in there to escape. If you don't and you leave her in there, she will be trapped in there forever. But she knew about the door. She knew about the door. She knew about the watch. We found the watch. So, so maybe, well, what do you have to wear it? You have to wear the watch? What, what you have watch? To, the, the, the beyond the shore, the shore, the, 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 the watch. I don't know the what engravings. you're talking about. Show me the watch. Roger has it. He's in the book. Where's Roger? He's, <laughs> he's in, in, the, the, he's in, the, he's in the books. He's in the books. <laughs> and we'll start moving over toward uh, the books and... Tim will come into the office and be like, Ah, uh, I didn't know this was here. And he looks at you, Vicky. How did you find it? I dug through the wall. You I dug pulled, through the wall. I pulled out books. I was trying to find, maybe there was a book. I thought maybe the answers would be in a book in here because we noticed books we had seen before. I've, I've seen some of these books. But then it just kept going and going and going. Where and does then it go? And he bends down. He's looking and he sees this Hulk blocking <laughs> the end of the tunnel at the far end. So he doesn't really see any light or anything. He just, where does it go? It goes to a, a big room. I think it's a library. It's got a, a big spiral staircase and, and it's sunny. It's sunny. The so library? I, yeah. What is that? What is it? Um, It's the library. I just thought it was downstairs. Is it? Can a we good get out? Place? Yeah, I mean, can we go there? Is that better? No, it's not a good place. I wouldn't go to the library if I could avoid it. Is that where Michael Whitwer went? I don't know where Michael Whitwer went because he didn't come and talk to me first. We have to decide if we're going in now or not because Dr. Friend could come in here at any moment. Yes, we are going in. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bobby? Yes, let's go. Let's get Neil? Roger and let's go. If you want to go, go now, if so. Okay. Um, okay, but you we'll can't go. take her. You don't understand me. You can't. She can't be a part of the ritual. It won't work. What is the ritual? I can't tell you now, but trust me, you need to be able to control yourself. You have to be able to move. We can't carry her? Or... I don't know, like, <sighs> pick up something? You could try, you could try, but the risk, if you fail, I'm telling you, is that she will be trapped in there forever. So there is no way to get her back, is what you're saying. This is the only way you know how to get out of here. So she's stuck. At least she'll be stuck in the hospital. It's not a hot, it's not a- The real only way I know how to get out, I don't know how she could do it, but, you can try. Roger! Roger! And you hear Vicky's voice echoing down the tunnel of books. I'm trying to snap. Roger! He just takes the book and puts it back on the shelf. Coming! Kinda. Tim starts to turn back to as Roger's scuttling back through, and he's just like, I didn't know there was an entrance up here. I've been to the library. Lots of interesting material in there. It's very enlightening, but it is dangerous. There are guardians of the library. And if you're there at night, it can be very, very deadly. What and it's just like looking through into the tunnel, like curious and, and weirded out. What do they guard? They guard knowledge. But Bobby's interest is peaked in the knowledge. <laughs> yes, I don't it's that's why I went, <laughs> right? See if I could learn even more. But 
there is a risk. It's better if you go during the day, but not at night. They say there's a beast. A beast that stalks the shelves. <laughs> and just then, Roger comes through the tunnel. The beast. Uh, you are the beast. You heard, you heard that? I'm the beast. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine. Uh, what did you see? Going? I saw a, a library, and uh, I uh, grabbed one of the books and started looking through it, and it, uh, like every fucking book we come across, it just looks like a regular old book. But inside of it, it had names of people we've come across. And, uh... I kind of feel like we're all characters in somebody's play. And Tim smiles. You are getting it. <laughs> I was thinking, I was making a couple phone calls, and I was thinking, like, when I t talked to them in the, in the cotton candy room, they were not getting it. But Great. you weren't there. You went to the gray room. So maybe now that's why you're getting it. I could try to, whatever. What I is, could try to explain, but. Wait, wait, wait. You, you, you just reminded me of something. When Roger went to the gray room, they did something to him, to his eye. And, and they did that to me too. What did they do? They take the patsu. They take the patsu? What? They take the patsu? They take the patsu, yes. Friend, he wants the patsu. Sorry, sorry. So, what is patsu? I don't know. I just know that it's called patsu. And I know that it's going to be a... And he looks around. He's like, we can't keep talking in here. He could come in at any minute. Okay. The patsu is... Ne is you're going to need the patsu in order to get out of this place. Trust me. So let's get going. Roger grabs him and slams him up against the wall. Wham! And he just blinks like curiously at you and turns his head and he's almost like amused. <laughs> that was unexpected. What did they take from me? What is this fucking patsu? Because mine is gone. It's... I, I don't know what it is. I just know that we all have it. Everyone that passes close to the king begins to fill with it. Well, what if they took mine? Am I going to be in trouble in there? Oh, they, they could never take all of it. Not at once. Certainly that would kill you. And it wouldn't help them at all. It wouldn't help they, a friend at all. Have they taken your pets, who, you son of a bitch? And you look and you see that he's got a bruise under his left eye hmm. and the mark of a wound. And he's just like, regularly. Does this have to do with And he the slips off the wall and like fixes his shirt. Doesn't seem too worse for the wear, nor too bothered. Vicky's just thinking like Patsu, like she's just trying to make sense of like so many of these words are like gibberish. Yeah. Um, and she says, does It was in the notes. It was in the handwritten yeah. notes in the Ars Goetia. I was about to say, does this have to do with the Ars Goetia? The Ars Goetia. <laughs> Pazuzu. Pazuzu was a guy. In the uh, a guy in the Osgoetia, he was a, he was um, uh, like a king. Mm hmm. So is that? What is does that, that have to do with Patsu? It sounds familiar. I'm just saying. Why are you Why are you looking at me like I'm crazy? Well, Patsu, be, what is Pazuzu. your evidence that the two things begin with a P? <laughs> I mean, no, let's go through the fucking door. <laughs> 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 I'm done. I don't care if I die. <laughs> we need to get out of I want to get home. I want to get home. I want to see my son. I want to see my family. Are you taking her? And he points out of the office into the waiting area where a just minding her own business is sunshine. Just sitting in the chair, looking at the ground. Roger, I don't know if we can take her. We risk losing her. <sighs> well, we gotta try. And Roger just picks her up and puts her on her show on his shoulder. 
And let's take a quick break, uh, and we'll be right back. <laughs> oh, my God. Standing in what we call Dr. Dallin's office, what perhaps is now Dr. Friend's office, uh, in the evening is Roger and Vicky, Bobby and Neil, along with Tim King bio and sunshine thrown over Roger's shoulder uh, <laughs> and presumably in unbelievable amounts of pain. Before you stands a red pressurized door, the large metal handle. What do you do? <laughs> Who has the watch? Roger, Roger does. Roger okay. has just, just making sure, just making sure, because apparently we're not allowed to retcon in this game. So I just want to make sure we say we have the watch. <laughs> we have the watch. <laughs> Do we need the watch? The Timothy says we don't need Un the watch. Unknown. I I don't know what is fucking going on. We're keeping the watch. We're keeping the watch. <laughs> Roger. I'm keeping uh, the dog. Roger uh, puts his hand on uh, Peggy's hand and slides it down and to grab the pipe. Uh, Roger, you're holding sunshine. You shut up. Roger! <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, him he's, with trying the pipe. To, he's trying to do it in a way that's like, you know, we don't, let's not make a big deal about this. So he like Vicky squeeze, makes, Vicky squeezes makes a big your hand. Deal about it. No, I'm kidding. No, Vicky feels you. And at first she thinks, oh, he's trying to hold my hand. And then she's like, he's taking my weapon. Um, <laughs> that's, what, that's what I wanted it to look like. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Uh, so she just for a second holds on and then she... Let's go, and she squeezes Roger's hand back. Uh, his hand is so big, it's just his pinky. He's like, oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's like a giant. He's a giant. No, Vicky, Vicky gives him Come, like a- Come, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> Let us go through the door. Puts her on his shoulder, sitting on his shoulder. <laughs> a knowing squeeze back. As, you know, people in relationships, you've been in a relationship for a long time, it's just the knowing, like, okay. And she kind of 
the classic we're going to try to escape this hospital together squeeze we've all right. <laughs> that every there. relationship knows at some point we have all worked out those codes you know yeah. the classic elderly woman's on your shoulder you're taking your makeshift <laughs> pipe weapon little squeeze <laughs> and she does okay. the same to neil <laughs> and then Vicky comes over and does it to both Bobby and Neil. Oh, it's okay. Oh, we're squeezing. We're squeezing. Uh, who goes through first? Vicky. Vicky asks uh, Timothy. Tim, who needs to go through first? How do we do this? Oh, um. You're Tim. Sorry, I forgot I was playing Tim. Uh, playing Tim this episode will be Joe O'Brien. <laughs> Uh, he looks back and looks at Sunshine on your shoulder and it's just like, okay, let's do it. And he goes up to the door and chunk, he pushes it and you feel this like, like this sucking of air as like the air seems to shift inside and he pushes the door open and you see what looks like a routine utility door into uh, a stairwell like a um, stairwell for like a like a tall building basically going down yeah going down so he opens Not- up the door and you just see the you know the cement flooring with the steel pipe uh, handle and he just holds it open for you and he begins to walk in and he begins to descend down does it look like the staircase in the night floors building? Does no, it look to the roof access. Uh, no, it, it looks doesn't. like it looks like you would be completely unsurprised to find that this is the stairwell of the Dorchester House Hospital. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Like the right. like the um, if you didn't you know didn't have to use the elevator or the nice central staircase, this is like a utility staircase Just like to get to concrete. Yep, get to roof access like that kind of uh, staircase, and he begins to. Descend it. Uh, Vicky will look at Roger, but start to step forward like she's going to follow him next. Okay, Roger will walk in, carrying Lyra Westover on his shoulder, holding a pipe. <laughs> holding a pipe. Uh, okay, everybody passes through the door, and the door closes shut behind you. Uh, and you begin to descend. You walk down, and there's like a uh, you know, a oh my god, my brain doesn't work when I run games. A landing, <laughs> right? And then, like, it turns, boom, another landing, and you start zigzagging down. You're not seeing any doors opening into, like, you know, you don't see floor four, floor five, floor or whatever, you know, uh, sub basement C, D. Like, there's no doors on these landings, <laughs> there's just landings, and they just keep going. And you go past four landings, then eight landings, then 12 landings. <laughs> and then you start to get tired and a little sore. And particularly Roger hefting this extra weight is going to have to do a stamina check for me. Uh, what would we do for your stamina check? Strength. Constitution. Con. Let's do con. Huh. Yep. Okay. This isn't always about how strong you are. It could be strength too, because so much of it is about like the, Actually, the load that you're carrying. Yeah. She's yeah. an old lady, and he's uh, the Incredible Hulk. I rolled a 57 under 65. Nice. nice. Okay. So this doesn't seem to be affecting you yet, which is how much longer there, Demon? Just a little longer. Demon. Oh, he calls back, <laughs> and his voice echoes up and down this stairwell. Roger is being hyper vigilant in watching every single one of Bale's moves. Yeah. He's uh, now heard the word ritual. I think I was in the room for that. Maybe not. But uh, I, th- I th- maybe we're even talking about it in the staircase. I mean, Vicky, I think, is feeling similar to Roger. She didn't trust Bale. She doesn't trust Bale. She didn't want to ask for Bale's help, but they she felt like they needed it because Lyra was freaking out. Um, but yeah, she's uneasy the entire time. It's a part of Roger that thinks um, the ritual could involve some sort of sacrifice and is wondering if this guy is like using us uh, to get out. Um, so he's watching and uh, just really uh, 
really studying him. In fact, maybe he'll even strike up a conversation. So this uh, ritual, what does it entail? And he looks back at Vicky like, Roger has no, he's not good at reading people, but he knows that Vicky is really good with her like human. Um, so he's like, uh, so what's, uh, what's the story with this ritual? Yeah, it's it's uh, we don't need. It. You'll find out. You'll find out when we get there. I'm Seems rolling. like we got plenty of time to uh, talk. He keeps walking down. He's like, actually, no. You know, you'd think so, uh, but we don't. Um, I am. Um, I am. And he's kind of trailing off as he walks down. He's like, I'm actually doing a great deal of work right now. Uh, you'd be surprised. Um, I am making sure that we're headed the right way. So. It, it, it takes a little bit of concentration and he keeps walking. <laughs> I rolled human. And you've seen no doors, no other ways. Yeah. It's just it's just down. Straight down. I, I rolled human. But you okay. okay. I rolled it on <laughs> Timothy Bale, King Bile. Um I rolled a seventy nine under eighty three. You nice. know that you know enough to know that there is no way you could ever possibly know his motivations. He is so far beyond understandable because he is, for all intents and purposes, to you, completely insane. Yeah, he is like clinically insane. Clinically insane to the- Inscrutable. Yeah, to a degree that you cannot wrap your head around because unfortunately, (laughs) you have not failed any sanity checks in impossible landscapes. I have so though. <laughs> you have a good grasp on reality and this works against you in yeah. this case. You could try. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Me Actually, <could> try. Great <laughs> idea. <laughs> Me could uh, be human. Me fail is pretty I. good. Uh, 65. Me, f- Me fail oh, I. Oh <laughs> shit. Yeah, I failed. Um 76 under oh, over 60. Human. Oh, sorry. No, shit. Sorry. 76 under 78. So I won. Oh, whoa. I, I scored whoa. that one. I nice. actually had to like, stack the human. Uh, yeah, I got 76 under 78. So nice. just, yeah. You, Bobby, uh, trust him. You That's believe that he is leading you to a oh, way God. out of the hospital. Pure and simple. That is what he is doing. And that's what he, I mean, you talked to him, you went to get him and maybe you guys talked between there and here. And he was a little freaked out that that they were going into Dr. Friend's office without him. And he was like, you know, though his, his conversation jumps around to a lot of things that seem to not make sense or connect to each other. He does seem like this is just a brief break in his work day. That's the vibe that you get. Like he was yeah. making all these calls and he was like, uh, yeah, I could get you out of the hospital real fast. Just, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. And Bobby feels, uh, Bobby, Bobby still remembers that talk about seeing the King. He still believes Timothy's useful to him for that, especially. So he's mm-hmm. just like, yeah, this is, this is fine. This is fine. So he continues to lead you down. Uh, he says, you'll, you'll find out, um, <laughs> believe me, we'll have time. And he, gets down and suddenly you see that there is a landing with a door and it continue the stairs continue down but there is a door and he's like ah and this is the one and he reaches over and it just looks like a you know an access door to another floor and he opens up the door and walks in and there is a brief area and another door right there. And then he opens up that secondary door and you're kind of like holding them all uh, open for each other. And as he opens the secondary door, you can see in and you see straight down what looks like a long hallway. This long hallway is rather wide and rather unadorned. Concrete floor, uh, stone walls, or not stone walls, but like, um, like tile on the walls that very much so looks like a hospital. It just, it looks like a hospital. And you see a, a, a long running area and doorways to either side on the left and the right. And down some distance, a big double door is closing off the hallway. And he opens this door to you and begins walking along. 
as you guys start walking along, you notice immediately, uh, just naturally, with your alertness and your seek and your uh, your um, search, which is just like over twenty, that there are people in these rooms. There are door. There are windows into the rooms, and they are patient rooms. Mm-hmm. And as you're walking past. You're seeing people that are just like sitting in a chair, like in like a robe, just like looking at a wall or like somebody that is laying on like an examination table. And there seems to be like a doctor hunched over them doing something, but you're just kind of like walking past. It feels like you're in a hospital. Do do we recognize anybody just like as glancing as we walk by faces from uh, the posters, like the pictures on the walls? Uh, Roll alertness. So weird. Ooh. Oh my god. I keep another eight. I keep rolling so well. Wow. Um, eight <laughs> under fifty-two. You are absolutely crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> You're not walking for too long, Vicky. When you walk by one door, and you see a man inside of a room, and he's looking at he's he's standing he's got his hands on a wall and he's sort of like running his hands over a wall and you're seeing him from profile so let's say you're you're seeing him the side of his head and he's looking up and he's putting his hand on the wall up and down and moving it around and he seems to be playing with something on the wall and there is something on that wall it's hard to tell what it is from your angle and you're just walking by but your unbelievable alertness uh has you Stop in your tracks. We just see Vicky like stop. The man is wearing a, a baseball hat as as he's doing this, and uh, perhaps he just turns his face enough toward the side, and you see that this baseball hat has the B of the Boston Red Sox on it. And so it's there's Troy. A, there's a Red Sox hat. Hey. Roger that needs stuff. a sanity check. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, <What>? help me. <laughs> Roger, please help Roger. me. I have no athletics. Please. <laughs> please, Roger. <laughs> you recognize the face of Dr. Dallin. Oh. And he's just in this room, like messing with something on the wall. And everybody's now walking ahead of you. They just keep walking. And uh, Tim Bile comes to the big double door that's in the middle of the hallway. And he just, boom. And he pushes them. And they just open up like like the doors in a hospital hallway. And the hallway just keeps going. Vicky tries to open the door. (laughs) <laughs> the Dr. Dallin door. The Dr. Yeah. Dallin? Oh, God. The DDD? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's now walking away from Vicky. You reach down to the doorknob, click, and it opens. In that instant, his head snaps to the side, sees you. You completely recognize Dr. Dallin. He's in, like, a T-shirt and jeans with a socks cap on, and he sees you. And he gives you this look like, what the hell? And he just turns and he grabs this thing and shoves this thing up on the wall. And you hear this like large metal like clank and he jumps into the wall. (gasps) (laughs) From your angle, this is what you see. Vicky opens the door and looks to see where the fuck he just went. You start running in and then shunk this metal dumb waiter door shuts and it's this like unusually large door and then just like won't you hear this sound as the dumb waiter starts running and he has gone down in, in, in a dumb waiter somewhere I am dumbfounded <laughs> Roger's like Vicky get back here what was he doing? You he hear running echoing, his hands echoing from the, the hallway. Yeah, yeah he was like it? running his hands on the dumbwaiter trying to... Oh, on I the dumbwaiter. Yeah, on the dumbwaiter itself. 
So it's like in the wall. It's like there's a hole in the wall, and there's the dumbwaiter in, has moved yeah, and, down. And it has like a steel door that uh, you know opens and closes. And now it's just a shaft. Like it's just no. He closed this this door, but yeah, now it's just a shaft. I mean, if you do you open? Can it? I try to open it? Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> open it, and you see this like line going down to the dumbwaiter, and you see it descending through like multiple floors. Doctor Dallin. Yeah. No, he just keeps going. Down. He, doesn't, he doesn't respond to you. You what? You what up? She just what? Just like what the? F- she just like turns around. What's in the room? Like what else is in this room? This it, there's like a potted plant, a hospital cot, a secondary chair next to it, like for a guest, and otherwise it is pristine, crystal clear. It doesn't seem like there's any other patients in here, and. Uh, Roger calls to you from outside. Vicky! Vicky! She snaps out of it, but this room doesn't even look familiar. It doesn't look like Dr. Dallin's old office. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It j- it looks like the hospital rooms that are, uh, you know, where... In the Dorchester house. Okay, in the normal except, D- Dorchester house. In the normal Dorchester house, except it ha- they have more things than the third floor does, which are bare of anything. Right. Th- these definitely have things as if it was like a normal hospital room. Or like the first floor, like if it was a patient that yeah. was allowed more freedom. Totally. What the fuck? Okay, so she turns around and she just gets out of the room, like looks either way down the hallway and sees them at the end by the double doors and just yeah. kind of scurries to, to catch up to them. Okay. I saw, I saw, that. Roger, Roger. What, what? Bobby, you don't Neil. stray from the pack. I saw Dr. Dallin. That was Dr. Dallin. So the king, you see, is kind of like a planet. He's just like talking uh, to like the walls and you guys kind of like hang back for a second. He's talking to himself as he's walking, talking to you, but thinks you're listening, but you're not. You you fall back, Neil, yeah. Bobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you mean? Walking, you guys walking behind. We're just, what do you yeah, mean? He's he's down. Down. God, he was wearing, he was wearing a baseball cap. He was just in like, like plain clothes. And he, Did he and see then he, you? Yes. And then he recognized me. I swear to God, he recognized me. He saw me, and then he opened up a, an elevator shaft, like a dumb way to shaft in the wall. That's and not good. That's not in, good. And then he went down. He just started going down. I opened it back up, but he was gone. Uh, hey, uh, Bale, um, wh- what are these doors? If you're orbiting... Whoa. What are you guys doing? What are these doors? Someone just saw us. Don't look in those doors. Those are patient rooms. Leave them alone. I, s- I know somebody who was in there. You're going to see a lot of things in here. I need you to keep it together. Okay? Yeah, but I, I know him from our side. He, he, he's not here. He's on our side. It's, it's the doctor, Dr. Dallin. Oh, Dr. Dallin. Of course. Of course he would be here. He's searching. Can we keep moving? Do you want to get Dr. Dallin or do you want to get out of the hospital? Those are your options. Let me ask you this. Where is out? Where is out? Where are we going? Out to your dream world that you want to return to. Is the king there? The king is everywhere. But see, this is what I was saying. You seem to get it. He points to Roger. You guys... Not so much. I'm not really sure. This is what I was trying to say. The king is like a planet, right? And some people who come, maybe a star is better. A star. And he's like looking up into the ceiling. And as he says it, the light above him is like, and it starts to have this like electrical like shortage. And it dims and lightens, dims and lightens. Let's say star, a star in the universe. Some people move through space and time and never come close. Others pass too close. If they're not paying attention, maybe it diverts their trajectory a little bit, but they don't get caught. If someone slows down to take a closer look, you get trapped in the orbit. 
that is where you are. You are in the orbit of the king. That's where Mr. Wilde is. Mr. Wilde wants to get in the star, <laughs> which you can imagine is extremely dangerous to attempt to do. You have to know precisely what you're doing. If you want to get out of this orbit, you are going to have to follow my lead and then you are going to have to find a way to get so close to this star that it almost kills you. And that will give you the escape velocity you need to break out of the orbit. It's going to be very dangerous, but you can't get away without getting closer. How do we kill the star? You can't kill the star. All you can do is get out of his orbit. And I'm here to help. Are you leaving too? Me? No. I don't want to leave. But you want to leave. And I'm here to facilitate that. It's what I do. I help to facilitate those things that are meant to be. He's looking back at all of you. Now, can you please not open any doors without talking to me first? Doors have power in this place. What you see is not always what is there, especially for you. Looking to Vicky. Fine. Can we just keep going? Sure. And he turns around and he starts walking again. As he passes through another hallway, there's a T intersection and he's leading you and he gets this T intersection. He makes a left. He walks down another hallway. You're not seeing too many people, but occasionally you don't see anybody in the hallway, but occasionally through rooms, you'll see some activity going on. You know, you're not alone in this place, but then occasionally he'll open what looks like a patient room and he'll open it and inside he'll walk in, walk through, open a bathroom door within the room <laughs> and it opens up into a hallway. That is another part of the hospital. So it's like a maze and there is no way to find your way through here. And this guy seems to know exactly where he's going with the way that he just moves so confidently from place to place. There's a T intersection coming from the other side now where you would have to make a right, but he walks straight past it. You hear a sound, a scream, someone going, oh no, no, please help me, please help me. You see no reaction at all from Tim Bile, who's just <laughs> walking down the hall. <laughs> He walks past this T intersection and to your right, all of you hear these screams. Oh, please help me, please. Please help me. And down a ways down the hallway, you hear a voice that is echoing back across. You see a gurney with a man strapped down to it. <laughs> screaming for someone to help him standing behind the gurney with his back to you is a man in a fully white robe that is pushing the gurney away from you at a snail's pace it's like slowly walking it down <laughs> this hallway do you follow Tim <laughs> or do you break off? <laughs> like a choose your own adventure. I know. I know. Can we tell Tim? Can we say, Tim, let's check this out. Sure. Yeah. 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 Is that what Bobby does? Yes, Bobby. Uh, Tim. Timothy. Yes. Buddy. Who, who, 
<laughs> who is we need who is that who's screaming I don't know what you're talking about the hallway there's he looks down the hallway that you're seeing he's like there's nothing down there buddy do I I'm, am I still seeing the guy the, 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 yep, on the and you're here and his screams and he's it's slowly you. being pushed away he's getting further and further away I would say he's a hundred feet or more away now it's like and it, you know kind of like trying to thrash against these restraints but like tied down it's Timothy again he's he's screaming he's he needs he I'm gonna needs go how I uh, told you you're gonna see a lot of I'm gonna just Neil, walk over what there. are you and Neil <laughs> Neil, begins. Neil wait Neil Neil starts oh, no. walking down the hallway Neil give me a stealth roll Uh, that's a stealth. What is my stealth? Uh, yeah, that's a 35 over 10. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no that's stealth. a pretty good roll, too. <laughs> 35 over 10. All of a sudden, the robed figure that was pushing the gurney stops. <laughs> Head seems to jerk up as if to some attention and slowly turns. <laughs> down the hallway to look at you and you see a white pallid mask completely covering the face of this individual it turns and looks right at you Neil give me a sanity check no, no. just the very sight of it Neil. you've seen disturbing. this guy yeah uh, 32 over 25 oh, oh shit 32 over Gross. 25 you take a point of sanity damage as something about the sight of this guy uh. triggers immediately within you and you don't understand why this feeling that you killed your friend Fran. It, there's, a, there's a connection between oh. this man and Fran what? and you broke that connection when you killed her. This is all just from a mask. And then he turns and he begins to run down the hallway pushing this man who is just like oh, is there somebody there is somebody there help me please help me and he starts to run away what's his name is that Michael Whit yeah can we recognize is it him? Michael Whitwer can we recognize his screens yeah, I mean that's what I was wondering because I saw Michael Whitwer was the one I saw on the, the gurney right yeah in the night floors yeah yeah, can I do can I do like an alertness or like yeah, a roll alertness? Uh it's Michael Whitwer. It is Michael Okay. It is we Michael know this. We we all know this. Yeah, let's let's say you put it together as players and you it's been twenty years. Can you I recognize a man's scream twenty years later? I would not, later? Forget, I would not that. forget that. <laughs> I would not forget but that. that is something that's hard to forget. So uh you get the sense that it is him. Vicky starts sprinting. Vicky begins sprinting. Da, 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 change the music. Bum, 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 ba, bum, 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 bum. Vicky starts running down the hallway uh, towards this figure, and he's cooking now. He's moving. Uh. Vicky, as you run down the hallway, you see above you a, a huge hole in the ceiling above you. You start to run down, oh. and you look up, and you swear you see the side of your own face yeah. 20 years ago yeah. up inside this tunnel and you hear bleeding down the voice of Neil and you speaking. Give me a goddamn sanity Whoa. check. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Because we ran into, we saw a hole in the floor at one point on the night floors. Yeah, and we saw the oh. porcelain mask. Oh. Yeah. Like you we saw Michael Whitwer in the hallway. Vicky came up to him. He said, I'm a DEA agent. My name is Michael Whitwer. Uh, uh, are you from Delta Green? Whatever. And as he started talking, he began a hole formed in the floor. He began screaming. He was pulled down. And then Vicky saw a man in a white pallid mask look it up at her That's from right. the bottom of the hole and then moved away. But then you guys like stood there for a second and like conversed and in this next instant it seems where time has no meaning Vicky 20 years later is looking up from the bottom of that tunnel oh, Jesus. 
I got a 87 over 58. Oh, shit. Oh, there she is. Oh, shit. There's my Vic. Oh, join us. Join us. (laughs) Join us. Seeing yourself. (laughs) Seeing yourself is good for three points of sanity damage. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, So that freaks you out a little bit, and you see that the guy turns uh, to the right at the end of the hallway with Michael Whitworth and out of sight. Maybe Vicky even like stumbles because it's also I was thinking it was an exact replica like she sprinted down the hallway like with her heels on 20 years ago and now she's 40 something like she is older I think she starts to run and she's barefoot she's in like these hospital clothes and I think she might even like stumble like she might see it and just totally lose her balance and like fall and like bang her knee onto the Mm -hmm. you know hard linoleum tile and she's just like ah and then it's gone like she blinks like she squeezes her eyes shut and then they're gone well just around a corner and you hear you know you hear uh the footsteps still you know like they're still she, there they didn't vanish they just went around a corner uh is anybody else pursuing is it just vicky what do you, roger was like vicky vicky you started running down the hallway what do you do vic me yeah are you just gonna oh no she gets back up no no she gets back up uh, and i think she calls out michael michael and Help me! Help me! you hear from like around this corner it's like horrifying we um, all go she, we, she still mean, she keeps running she turns that corner hey she, no wait tim's calling after you as you start running he's like you can't you can't do that in here you can't you'll get lost and you guys start running after this you Go up and you turn right and you see that he is really far down the hallway, some distance away. Uh, so I need a, actually I need a stealth roll is what I need. Stealth. Yeah, I have no stealth. Okay. 32. Oh, six under 32. Wow. Ooh, nice. Yeah, man. Yeah. Sneaky. Rolling rocks. I'm 90 over 11. Okay, uh, we could say Bobby like kind of sprints out ahead, and Bobby, you start to actually like make up some ground, okay. and you see that like you're you're catching up to this, and you see that this figure is like turning to look, and it's like uh, almost seems alarmed, and is running like, and is picking up the pace. Michael is screaming, "Is somebody there? Who is that? Help me! Oh my god!" And you're do 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 do, and you're uh, cooking down this hallway, and uh, and go ahead and give me another uh, oh. stealth roll, everybody. Oh. Or I guess whoever right, is uh, leading the charge here. Oh, that one did not go well. Forty-eight over thirty-two. Forty-eight. Uh, you you lose him. Uh, you come around a corner and he's not there, but you still hear him beyond this set of double doors. You feel like you hear him behind behind there, but you don't see him. I got a 10 under 11 on that one. Oh, nice. Still don't see him. Yeah, maybe I just catch up to Bobby because I had like fallen behind. <sighs> <sighs> and you still, you hear the fading screams in the distance. Roger, are you pursuing or are you just staying back with Tim? <laughs> I mean, this is... This is real bad. Roger spent a lot of time in these hallways alone and uh, doesn't really want to go back there. And I've got this fucking old woman on my shoulder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I imagine it's just like Yoda on your back, like just tied around like a backpack. <laughs> I'm torn between believing this maniac and thinking he has no idea what he's talking about. But there is a confidence with which he moves through the, the rooms that leads me to believe there is some... Uh, there is some uh, truth to what's going on here. And if that's the case, I, I, I don't feel like I can pick and choose what I believe and what I don't believe. He made it pretty clear. You're going to see a lot of things here. And I feel like he's Roger's lost control of the situation. We're either going to believe this guy or we're not. And it seems like we're not. People have run off on a, potentially a goose chase. If we're supposed to stay with him, there may be no way back. So I can't even see them now. They've all taken off mm-hmm. down the way. Yeah, I feel like if one of us stayed behind and stayed within uh, like eyesight, maybe there'd be a chance there's like a breadcrumb you could find back, find our way back. But if we go down this way now, I don't know if we can find our way back. So he's like... 
We gotta go follow them. They're gonna get lost. To Tim. Tim's like, they're already lost. They won't find their way out. Just come with me. And you can at least get out. I can't. I can't leave them. I can't. I can't leave them. This, there's got to be a way that we can. We can. We can go there and get back. <sighs> there's only one way. There's only one way. Um. We can try. <laughs> and he just smiles at you. He looks down. Just where Vicky, Neil, and Bobby went. The stairs are right over here. We're really close. Uh, I hate this guy. <laughs> I hate him. I just like, we got to try. Come on. All right, lead the way. And you break off of the path uh, and, and you are in pursuit. Okay. Third, Stealth roll. Uh, you've lost sight of him. Uh, however, you still hear the scream some distance ahead of you. Stealth roll, please. Mine. Me stealth. Uh, no. Oh. And whoever's pursuing. Okay. 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 Yeah, it was... No. 26. For my stealth is so low. 26. 26 under 32. Oh, nice. dang. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, for- 48 over 11. I just, I have such a bad stealth. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, you, you burst through. School. You burst through these double doors, and uh, you see the tail end of this robe as it passed through uh, another set of doors to the left. And you feel like so, you're closer. We're, we're, so we're still pursuing. We're still. Bobby's gonna still keep pursuing. still pursuing, and you feel yeah. like you're getting yeah closer. I mean, he's right there. You can hear the scream super, super loud. You come up and to the left is a double door. Again, looks like hospital doors. You just kind of like push open, they swing both ways. The doors are still swinging back towards you. When you reach them, roll a stealth check as you open up this door. Ooh, 47 over 32. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> You push open and you see, sure enough, there he is uh, in the hallway, still running from you, but a decent distance away. And it's just a dead chase at this point. And roll again. Oh, shit. And this will be the last one. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> of your life. God of damn it. 65. Uh, 65. 65. 65. <laughs> you, he's uh, running down this hallway and turns, uh, you know, some distance away, the screams begin to fade. And now you don't hear him. You, <laughs> we see Bobby run to the end of this thing and turn down the hallway where the guy just was. And you see nothing. You see multiple doors to the left and to the right, and you hear no screams. And you're just standing there for a second. <sighs> Are they? Are they behind what was me? It? What? Did, what did you see? I was close. I was. Yeah, I could see him. They Roger were, and Tim come right up behind you. They were running. Who was? The man in the mask. And Whitworth. He had Whitworth. I think. And Vicky's there too. <sighs> you saw. You saw Lundine. Lundine. Oh no, Michael Whitworth. What? And Man. the guy, the doctor in the mask. Lundine has Whitworth. Oh, no. Okay. We gotta go. Now. Now. And he starts, like, backing up the way that he came. And he looks. This, this is the first time you've seen King Bile. King of the Fair. demons. <laughs> Afraid of something. What, why, what, what's, who's, what, who is Lundine? Lundine is, Lundine is, uh, how can I explain? I'll, I'll, I'll explain on the walk. I'll explain on the walk. Come on. We have to find our way back. Come on. He turns around a corner, opens up boom, this double doorway, and it just stops. And there is this, like, balcony 
This is right the way you just came. He opens up this double door and there's this balcony. And it like the balcony goes to the left and to the right. And then it goes out, like out far in front of you as if you are. Remember we were like in one a hotel on one of our recent trips where the whole middle was open. Yeah. And it was yeah. like the yeah. balconies you could look over from the different floors down. That's Minneapolis, a, right? Is that what it was? I like down so. down a central shaft. It was like oh, some yeah. old yeah, warehouse building start. and they um he opens up this door that you had just come through and boom and all of a sudden you are just at a railing looking over and you just see railing upon railing of different floors above and below and it is not where you just came from <sighs> and Tim just like turns and it's like and looks at you and it's just like oh no, no, no. And he like rubs his hands really hard on his buzzed head and he's just like pushing it down through his hair. He looks to the left and to the right. He just sees a million doors everywhere. He's like, I told you, I told you we shouldn't have gotten off the path. <sighs> We're going to have to try to find a different way. And he starts walking in to this like balcony area and you can see over and there's just, like I said, floor upon floor of what looks like hospital and nobody else. It just looks like an like almost an infinite amount of options for where to go. And he's like lost his confidence and he starts walking and looking around. Shit. Fuck. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We've been, we've done this before. We did this on the night floors. We just... How did how did we find the lobby again? We just wanted to find it, right? We 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 just if maybe if we just picture something somewhere. And he's not he's not listening to you. He's just walking. He's just walking uh, across, and he opens up this door and like looks in, and then like looks back the other way, and then just like closes it again and keeps walking around <laughs> this big rectangle. Every once in a while, he's like opening a door and looking in. What, what, what are we looking for? What are we? Shh, I can't concentrate. Shh. And he keeps walking and opening, walking and opening. And all of a sudden, uh, Roger, the hairs on the back of your neck rise up. As your alertness picks up something. There's something above you on the floor above. He turns around, looks up this floor and you see what looks like perhaps a dog walking along this upper floor but it seems to be twisted and malformed into some part real part shadow like hound and it emerges from the darkness of this hallway and it's just like and only Roger sees this in this first instant as it's looking over the hallway what the fuck? Oh, Jesus. Roger do you say anything you've got five seconds five uh, go in this door with me right now and Roger opens a door and just ah. goes into the nearest door. Wait, where are you going? Oh. Tim yells, Roger, boom, busts a door opening, having no idea what's on the other side. <laughs> and the Roger same just instant. thinks, Camden Yards. <laughs> <laughs> Please be Camden Yards. He closes his eyes. <laughs> Camden Yards, the bullpen. And he opens up this door, and we don't see what's beyond. We just see across this huge... A uh, gap that's the interior kind of shaft of this whole place and up on a railing above some sort of beast grips the upper railings of that uh, floor and launches itself off of the uh, <laughs> off of the floor across this gap and it seems to be unnaturally flying after all of you as you stumble <laughs> into a room or a place that we haven't seen yet and that's where we just have to stop for today. Oh we have to pick it up there next oh week. Oh <laughs> you no idea what's behind you. I hope it's a you round know, room. You know what's in front of you. It <laughs> seems like certain death. Oh god. Oh man. Well, we'll see. We'll see you next week. Perhaps the last episode for some of you.
love you. We'll see. We'll I don't see. want to go to Camden no. Yards so much in my life. I know. Who is this thing in the Camden the Yards? There's no place like Camden Yards. There's no place like Camden Yards. <laughs> Bobblehead <laughs> night. 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 <laughs> 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 <laughs>